Good morning, Super 7s. Right, we only have a couple lessons left until summer, so what better unit to spend them on than equations? So, yeah, you did really well last week. It's your first time ever seeing equations, many of you. And so, uh, with that in mind, this is a really important skill that like goes all the way to the very top of maths, like all the way to university. So, for your very first time being on the computer last week, you've done really, really, really well to learn it. And a lot of you did super well on this on this homework. There's a few things I want to talk about today. We're going to do just a little bit more content today, but I'd like this lesson to be largely practiced because I want to make sure everybody's on the same page. So I'll do my best to ramble a little bit less on this video and um, hopefully it'll be a quick video and you'll get a chance to, to um, have some practice. So that should be really good for us. Okay, first things first. Last week, oh, I think about a third of you did absolutely perfect in your very first ever go at equations, which is really impressive. You did it exactly the same way that I did it. You used the balance method to solve them, and that was awesome. About another third of you um, mostly got it. So there was like maybe just an issue that you didn't write the questions vertically or that you missed a step or something, but I could really tell that you largely had your head around it, which was really good as well. And then there's like a third third of you who weren't quite sure, or the third third of you just put the answers without any steps at all. Now, you can't do that, okay? I know that you guys are really clever, and that's why I'm really lucky to get to teach you and everything. But in this topic, I'm trying to get you ready for the future, the future of maths, when maths gets a little bit harder. So while I know that lots of you can do it mentally, and I can do it mentally too, it's not the right thing to do because I'm trying to show you how to be a proper mathematician when the questions get proper tough. So that's what we're going to do today to get that third third of you on board with the rest of us and to get the other third of you to make sure you just get that last step tidied up Today's lesson, you're going to become equation legends. So here we go. I'm going to do the first one wrong to show you what you guys did. Here you go. 5x take 15 equals 10. Many of you um, last week, of the ones who didn't quite do it right, would have just done this. You just said 5 times what take away 15 is 10. And you'd go, okay, well, 5 times, well, 5 times 5 is 25. 25 take 15 is 10. And you would have just done something like this. You'd have put either just the 5, which is the answer, or x equals 5. And yeah, it is right, but again, it doesn't have the steps. The other really common thing that people did, of the people who didn't quite get it right, was this. They actually kind of used the balance method, but without any, without any proper steps. So here's what they'd have done. They'd have known that the first step is to plus the, f the 15 over to the other side. So lots of people did some scratchings, which looked a bit like this. They'd have written something along the lines of 10 plus 15 equals 25. And they'd have written that thinking that they're doing a, a, a full step there because it's kind of like a step. And then they'd have taken their 25 and written down 25 divided by 5 equals 5. And then they'd either, they'd either have just left it like that or maybe they even wrote x equals 5. Well, I'm afraid both of those methods, guys, aren't algebraic methods. They're more numeric methods and, um, and <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, mental maths methods. It means that we can't quite use them because they're not going to make us strong enough at maths in order to do those really hard kind of year eight questions, those really hard year nine questions, and especially a little bit later, well, a lot later, when you guys get onto the A level and you get onto your GCSEs, those questions need the algebra. So I'm gonna make sure you all get the algebra. So here we go. First one is the same as last week's, okay? So this question here, it is the same as last week's. So if you think you can do it and you know the steps, go right ahead. But in case you weren't sure last week, have a really good listen now. Step one, it's 5x take 15 equals 10. You're gonna write the question out separately if it's from a worksheet. Okay, now I'm after what x is, but it's touching the five. So I'm going to protect them both. So I'm putting a little box around them to show that they're protected. Now the box you do not have to do, okay? This one's a bit of an option, but it helps me to explain. So that's why I put the box in. So yeah, it's the 5 and the x there. So I've got them boxed off and protected because I'd like to figure out what the x is in a few more steps. Okay, 
Now then I say to myself, on that left hand side, there's a minus 15. I don't want it there. So I say to myself, what's the opposite of minus 15? And you guys know, it's plus 15. So what you do is you jot a little plus 15 up there next to the minus 15. Now, this balance method works because you do the same thing to both sides. As long as you do the same thing to both sides, the maths doesn't break. Just like if you had like one of those balance things that's shaped, oh gosh, what are they like? You know, those like balance guys that look like that and they're like balanced with a plate on both sides and as long as both sides are balanced, it stays in the middle. That's kind of what we're doing, but with maths. So that's why it's called the balance method. But anyway, you plus 15 onto both sides. So what am I left with on the left hand side now? Well, on the left-hand side, I'm just left with what's protected in the box, which is a 5x. Um, the minus 15 and the plus 15, they kill each other off because they're opposite. Because minus 15 plus 15 is 0. On the right-hand side now is 10 plus 15, which is 25. That's a perfect step one. Cool. Step two, then, is you look at the 5 and the x, and they're touching. Touching in maths means that they are multiplied because it's five lots of x, okay? It's five x's, so it means multiplication. Well, what's the opposite of multiply? Well, divide. So here's what you do. You show division with the fraction line. Divide by five, and the same on both sides for balance. Divide by five. Cool. Now here's what's neat. If you time something by five, and then divide it by five, it's as though you've done nothing at all, because like two times five is 10, but then if you divide that by 5, 10 divided by 5, you get back to 2, which is like doing nothing at all. That's what you started with. So that enables us to do this wonderful little whoosh, whoosh, with the sound effect and all, canceling the 5s out. And that leaves you just on the left-hand side with x. And on the right-hand side is 25 divided by 5, which of course is 5. Now that is the answer. You might be thinking, my golly, that took so long to do. And it did but only because I was taking so much time to explain it. When you get in the habit, this will only take a minute or two per question, okay? So it'll only be short, short, short. So when you get in the habit, it'll be quick. Cool? That's the end of last week's homework. This, home, this new topic, we're just going to get fractions in. That's the only difference. So check this guy out. It says 9x um, equals 5. Now, here's why it's harder. Because 9 times what equals 5? Well, I don't know. There's not... 5 is not in the 9 times table, so it's going to be like a decimal number of some sort, but it's tricky really at the end of the day. It's really hard. We're not going to be able to guess that number. So my mental maths peeps from last week, um, this is going to be really hard for you. So we need to have a better way of doing it. So we'll use our balance method. Here you go. 9x. It means 9 times x. Opposite of timesing by 9 is divide. So here we go. Divide 9. Divide 9. Because we have a 9 on the top and bottom in this question, we can go whoosh, whoosh, cancel them out. And you're left only with, on the left-hand side, the x. And on the right-hand side, guess what? It's already done. See how it's 5 over 9? It's simply 5 ninths. That fraction doesn't simplify or anything. So that there, buddies, is the final answer. See how easy peasy that was? Instead of having to worry about a decimal or anything, we just used our balance method. That was only a one stepper. Usually there, there are two steps, but that one's a one stepper. Cool, cool, cool. Now check this one out. 10x take away 2 equals 5. Okay. Same old steps as last time, guys. I want the x, and it's with its mate, the 10. So we're going to box them off, keep them safe, keep them away from the other ones. Now there's a minus 2. It doesn't belong on that side because I only want there to be an x on that side. So I don't want the minus 2. The opposite of minus 2 then, plus 2. Plus 2, plus 2. What are you left with on the left then? Well, the 10x. Because the minus 2 and the plus 2 kill each other off. What are you left with on the right? Well, it's 5 plus 2, so it's 7. Cool. Now again, this is a hard one because 10 times what makes 7? Oh, I don't know. Some decimal number. Too hard to work out. So here's what you can do. Balance method. Divide both sides by 10, over 10, over 10, because that enables you to go whoosh, whoosh, and that kills the numbers off of that side. So now you're only just left with the x's, which is what we want. And guess what? Since our answer is supposed to be fra since our answers are supposed to be fractions, we've now done it. The right hand side is just seven tenths. All we've done is we've copied out this right hand side down again, seven tenths. Boom, no problem. Okay, 
Here's what I'll get you to do. Um, I think lots of you will be having the idea now. So if you'd like to try D all by yourself, I'll give you a hint. There's a bit of a trick at the end. It's a bit of a mixed trick, maybe. But yeah, it's a bit of a trick at the end. But I still think you should have a little go. So you ready? In three, two, one, try D. Go! Okay, and you're back, Super 7. So hopefully this is what you did. You said to yourself, 3x, I'm going to protect that. And you boxed it off. You said the minus 8 doesn't belong. Plus 8, plus 8. Then you said to yourself, what's left on the left? Well, just the 3x, because I protected it. What's on the right? Well, it's 19 plus 8. Or sorry, it's 9 plus 8, which is 17. Cool, cool, cool. Next step, you said to yourself, 3 times what makes 17? Oh, I don't know, some decimal number. 3 doesn't go into 17. So what you did instead is you divided both sides by 3. Over 3, over 3. Because then you got to go and cancel out those 3s. That just meant that this side was x. And on this side, the right-hand side, here's where the big trick came in. This side is 17 over 3, which is cool. Um, it's no problem at all. If you were a mathematician, 17 over 3 would probably be the final answer. But what we need to do for GCSE, and well, for regular people as well, not mathematicians, is we're going to make a, a mixed number because people understand them better. So how many 3s go into 17? Well, 5, because that brings you... Oops. 5, because that brings you to 15. And that leaves 2 more to get to 17. And the bottom number is 3. So what we've got here, I'm going to erase that, it's a bit sloppy. Uh, so what we've got here then, as a final answer, is five and two thirds. Bish, bash, bosh, you're done. As a mixed number, no problem at all, absolutely flying through this. And I hope that, I hope that you guys get that, okay? So the big important takeaway message from this is just that the fraction part's no problem. I think that'll be okay for you, I really do. But the important thing that you're showing me is that each one's got three steps, okay? Three lines. One line with the question on and the, the plus 15 or whatever it would be. One line like this, one line like this, and one line with the answer. So they all need one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And unfortunately, this one only had two because it didn't have that moving the number step first. But that's what I'd like you to focus on. Make sure you have shown me all of the steps. I really, really need you to show me the steps this time. Um, if you haven't shown the steps, then I'm not going to be able to mark this one as completed because it's really, really, really important that the skill um, of balance method is what you're learning. So I really need to make sure that, that you're doing the balance method, not any, ma not any mental method, okay? So I really don't like this. I only just want the balance method. So please make sure you do that. Um, your homework, my buddies, is going to be this. I've even, I might have gone a bit overkill here. I've written down a whole bunch of times you got to show your steps because I really need you to show the steps because they're critical. See, my lovelies, I really want you to do it. So yeah, show me all your steps. I've just given you some pointers in case you forget from the video. And here's what you're going to do. It's 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, 2, 4, 6, 12. So it's 11 questions. So I did that one for you because just in case you forget, Here's one that's done for you. That's even got a mixed number one. Question nine was done for you. So you've got 11 other ones to do, okay? So do all 11 of those other ones for me. That'll be absolutely perfect. See, I didn't put a square around the 4G there because I said that was optional. You don't have to put a square if you don't want either, but it might help you. Cool. I think that that's it then, my buddies. When you get it all finished, have a little bit of a check. I didn't provide you any steps in my answers. Um, when The one that you're going to check off of because I really have to see that you can do it too. Cool, cool, cool. Um, well, that's it. So good work, my lovelies. Uh, keep up the fantastic work as always. And that's it for me. Bye, lovelies.